This is the best of the wrap up show. Wrap up show. A recap and behind the scenes look with John High and Gary Delabate. The best of the wrap up show begins now. On Monday's wrap up show, we talked about my interesting weekend of getting my penis molded and getting a massage from a small Asian guy. I didn't think it was that odd, but uh, apparently they did, so check it out. Today, Richard taps me on the shoulder, I turn around, and there's a plaster cast of his penis in my face as I turn around with that. <laughs> you're carrying those molds around. You're so proud. And, yeah. But you did take some crap today because you seem to be semi-erect in those plaster casts. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a compliment, though. I wasn't erect, but I, I guess I look big in the you cast. You were cop at a semi. That's what we call it. <laughs> No, well, you know, maybe I was, but it wasn't because there was a guy there. It's because, you know, maybe I'm trying to pop a semi so my cast looks big. But how do you pop a semi when your ball when your pants are down and the only person in the room is a guy? <laughs> well, the- you close your eyes and fantasize. About a better looking Have guy? a few drinks. Yeah, about another guy. Is it the warm plaster that got to you? Yeah. Well, Ralph then, but Ralph brought up a good point when he called in that it. I, I can't remember if it was warm or cold, but he says it's cold. So uh, there goes that uh, that <laughs> <laughs> that defense that I had. Now, what was going on with the male masseuse? Um, well, that's all that was available. I went to this Asian uh, spa place that I really like, and you know, usually it's women, but I don't have a problem. I'm not sexist or anything. If a guy wants to massage me, then that's fine. I kind of prefer a woman, but that's all that there was at the time. And but he was really attentive to the uh, the buttock area, and he was doing this weird thing where he would take his elbow and jam it into my buttocks, and he did that for about ten minutes, and then the elbow started to creep towards the crack. Wait, wait Richard, you left out the part where he started by pulling your boxer shorts up your ass. <laughs> yeah, he made them into like a g-string so <laughs> that the buttocks were bare. I had on uh, a, a Simpsons boxer shorts, so he had to like get those out of the way. And then he started, you know, using his elbows to to knead. I guess you would call it kneading my buttocks. And then uh, then he started to creep towards the the butthole, and it was a little uncomfortable. But then what did he do? Then he get, then he gets in the weirder position where he mounts me like he. <laughs> <laughs> He got up like literally like a dog would mount me, but to massage my back. Wait, so his groin was against your ass then at that point? It w- it was close. It wasn't like right up against no, he, there. He but. had a ball on his leg. <laughs> hey, do your female masseuses do this perform the same in the same manner? No, this guy had his own technique. Uh, Are you positive he didn't fuck you? I yeah, I swear. It I did- mean, I mean, it, from what I can remember, unless he knocked me out, I don't like you know an alien abduction type thing, but. Uh, hopefully in 10 years I won't remember that happening. And you didn't think there was anything strange about any of this that's going on. You weren't going to tell him to stop or you're getting a little too close to my hole down there? Or? I was laughing. I thought it was kind of funny, you know. I, it it was strange. Do you, think he, do you think he was getting off on it in any way? You just think that's what he does? No, I think he just, that's what he does and... and I don't think those body parts bother him. I think he was just doing his job. You know, like a doctor, you stick your finger up somebody's butt, but it's part of your job. Terry in Miami, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, how you guys doing? Thanks for taking my call. You're welcome, Terry. I guarantee this Richard is a stall, stone queer. <laughs> Richard, are you a... Stone queer. A, are you a, I don't want to say the other, the other word, but how many times queer. have we got to hear about People touching his nuts and his ass. And his, it's horrible. I'm sick of hearing it. Yeah, but there's don't a. Count. There's a lot of times where people don't touch my nuts, but these are the ones that come up on the air. Trust me, most of the time people aren't touching my nuts, but Gary and Howard and all of them, that's the part that they find interesting when once in a great while somebody touches my nuts. Terry, I'm going to let you go because you have a lousy connection, but thank you for your call. Sal in Massachusetts, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, I got a question for Richard. Yeah. Hey, Richard, didn't you have to do some kind of gay act to get invited to the wedding and now everybody's getting invited? Yeah, I know. I already got emailed about that, but uh, I How even... How about that? No, nah, you know, I don't mind. I even said on the air before it was happening, I said... Yeah, I know. You said... I remember that, yeah. Yeah, I said, well, you know, I'll probably get invited anyway, but I'll do it for the good of the show. So 
I I know I know I was probably going to get invited anyway, but I just wanted to make a, a, a funny segment, so I bit the bullet and stuck my nose in Sal's uh, ass crack. <laughs> yeah, too much, guys. <laughs> All right, Thank thanks you. for your call there, Sal. Which isn't how you won the tickets anyway. You just did that. Yeah, I right, just did that right. for the also, good yeah. of the show. Uh, George, you're on the wrap-up show. Richard, I have had massages from guys for years. Uh-huh. I have never had a guy mount me. <laughs> <laughs> how can you mistake that for anything but an attack? Well, because he didn't attack me. He rubbed my back. Like, he did that so that he could get directly behind me and put his <laughs> hands, like, up on my shoulders. Richard, how tall was this guy? Uh, he was short, a short little Asian guy, about five foot, probably. Have you ne- five foot. Have you never had girls that were shorter than that give you a massage? Uh, yeah, and you know, I've probably had girls mount me, but I just didn't think nothing of it. I think you remember that, buddy. But you were asked that question, you were told, no, you never had a girl do that to you. Oh, mount me like that? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I probably didn't, but that's why it stuck in my head, is because it was weird that the guy mounted me. You know what's weird? I never had a girl shove her finger up my ass. That's why I remembered when the guy did it. Mike and Reno, you're on the wrap-up show. Chinese massage places. Has he ever actually been jerked off by a girl, or is it just legit? No, never. I, you know, I I go to the legit ones. I don't go for that. I like a massage. I get relaxed. You never accidentally went to a non-legit place and accidentally got jerked off? <laughs> no happy ending. No, never. Rich, I guarantee where you're I going. I would admit if I, I did. I guarantee where you're going. And I think what the guy was doing, because you said he brushed up against your balls. Uh-huh. They do that because they want you to, like, kind of initiate it once they do that. <laughs> well, he made a move and you didn't make a move back. There was no initiating here. You I big stayed fucking still. hero. <laughs> I was, uh, but he was a small guy. I could have taken him if he tried something. Hey, this is Jason, and on Tuesday's wrap-up show, we continued the on-air conversation about what a fiscally irresponsible moron I am for uh, spending more on a wedding than I actually have. Um, and uh, I also learned that my good buddy Richard Christie uh, has chosen to go to a Coheed and Cambria concert in Los Angeles rather than attend my wedding. And while I do not doubt the awesomeness of Coheed and Cambria, uh, the fact that he has yet to buy tickets to the show or tickets out to L.A., uh, you know, it, uh, it cut a little deep. But, you know, he's a hick. What are you going to do? So explain to Jason why you don't think you'll be able to make it to the wedding. Uh, Coheed and Cambria is playing <laughs> four nights in a row in L.A., and in New York, and I, I'm going to be in L.A. for their show. Have you bought your plane weekend. tickets yet? No. Okay. Do you so have really tickets to the shows? Uh, well, yes. I've already made plans to be at the hold shows. On. Made plans. In other words, you have not purchased tickets to the show. Somebody who works with them is going to be able to get you in. So really, for to not go to Coheed and Cambria, there's no financial loss to you. Correct? Uh, yeah. yeah no, and, he's and, choosing to go to Coheed and Cambria because it's more fun than going to my wedding. Well, no, let, and, him, let, let him explain it, Richard. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You explain it. Well, I mean, yeah, I feel minutes. bad now. But, <laughs> but Will already said, too, that he'd be pissed if I go to Jason's wedding and not his. So Why aren't you going to Will's wedding? Uh, I have an appearance that weekend. Well, that's a legitimate excuse if you booked it before you were invited right, to Right, but did, you didn't get Will's Save the Day card from a year ago either? Yeah. Well, yeah, but I'm, I'm a guy. I, weddings, I'm not gay. I don't care about not weddings. Gay. It's a guy much. you not work gay. with. You know what else? You know what? I love Jason, but Can I tell not, you gay. Else too? not gay. You wanted me to do a gay act with you yesterday I to know. get Rush on the show. Don't I say was, you're not gay. I was kidding, but you know what? <laughs> to God, like, this is what I thought Jason would say. I would, and Will even said, hey, it's no big deal. I don't care you're gonna, that much. Yeah. He's thrilled to get the extra money back. Exactly. But I also thought Jason would be excited that I'm not going because that's going to save him, end up saving him money and i'll still get you a gift jason well, and I, you. trust me i would love to hang out with you but no you wouldn't you're gonna no <laughs> no I you do. wouldn't you do listen if this was something look first of all i'm what? the king of not wanting to go to weddings so to say i don't understand would be a lie but if you, this is you're talking about a trip that is uh uh not booked there's no money invested. There's, there's, there's a band you've seen before and you will see again. But there dude, are band members you've hung out with before. This is I mean, you don't. This is it's an unnecessary that's reason to for you, missing my wedding. To you, to me. All right. Well, then there you go. I, but I and I love you, Jason. I'm not no, trying don't. to make light of your wedding, but <laughs> they're playing every album they've ever done. They've never done this before. <laughs> and, Richard, and, and it's like, that, can I just say one more thing? 
your girlfriend, who I'm also very good friends with, or, or friends with, uh, I get along with uh, very well, and I like very much. Uh, you know, Janice likes her, and he gets along with her, so she's not coming either? She'll probably come if you yeah, still okay. want her there. All right. But <laughs> but the thing is, like, really, you're going to have all your family there, everybody you know. You're right. Is it going to matter if I'm not there that much? No, apparently not, dude. Don't worry Would about it. Would it matter if the roles were reversed, upset, Richard? If you were I getting married, if you were getting married, hypothetically, and you wanted Jason to come, and he basically backed out for something that maybe you don't, you know, maybe it's a cat party that he's thrown a bunch of times and he wants to throw another cat party, kind of like you want to go see this band. Wouldn't that bother you a little bit? No, if I knew it was something that was really important to Jason, it really, uh, that's yeah, it me, is- it really wouldn't bother me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't look at Jason as any less of a friend because we're- we have a lot of other chances to hang out. We're- Jason, you said earlier in this wrap-up show that this wedding is not that important to the you. The party part, dude, listen. It's hard for me to argue this because I get not wanting to be at a wedding. I really do. No, like, it's not. Anybody. I would be there. <laughs> so no. see, see, the problem is, Richard's not saying he doesn't want to be at a wedding. He's saying he'd rather be at this yeah. than your wedding. What you're really saying, and this is what I told Richard today, why it may affect Jason, is, okay, it's a wedding. We're not gay. We know we're not looking to go to weddings. Right. All that, all that. We get that. But what you're saying is, I'd rather go see a band I've seen 30 times than be with you on one of the most important days of your life. Yeah, absolutely. But, they, but Gary, in Richard's defense, they've never played their entire collection back to back. Good point. Yeah. Good this point. is, so, I mean, you guys are making light, but this, when I heard about this, this is like one of the most important things in my life. Well, and, well, but, it's really, but it's really, but it's really not. And you've said that about a haunted hotel, right. too. You said that about a haunted hotel. Every girl you see is the best looking girl you've ever seen. Every porn star is the hottest porn star. Papa Every concert John's is the is best. The best. Is, this more impor- is this more important than elves tucking you in at night? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. I, but, uh, and, uh, you know, I feel bad, but I didn't think Jason would. No, you would... don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Well, I feel I bad that you're upset. No, I'd... I'm not going to tell you not to go on a trip. Go do your, go do your trip. But you are, you're very clearly choosing uh, an ex- extraneous, I can't fucking say the word, uh, uh, a bullshit activity. Yeah. <laughs> Overwatching uh, your friend uh, get married to the person you're yeah, with you, for the rest of his life. Why, superfluous? You, Jason, is that the word you're looking for? Uh, yeah, sure. Superfluous. No, but superfluous. you've already said that. <laughs> but you know what? You know what really weighs on this decision for me, too, is that you said that this wedding doesn't matter that no, much. No, no, no. I, I, see, I'm now I'm being misunderstood. The act of party, the pomp and circumstance of all that bullshit, that doesn't mean anything to me. But the wedding, I mean, the, the, the ceremony of being, you know, listen, the point of, of all this bullshit spending and big party and everything is to be surrounded by your friends and family and the people that you love most in your life and uh, while, while during a big event of yours. And you, listen, I'm going to give you a pass because I really think there's something mentally wrong with you and you don't understand uh, what's going on here. So it's fine. It's fine. I, I'm a little startled by the news, but right. it's, I'll, all get, right. I'll get We'll give it. you guys a second to catch your breath. We got to take a break. We'll be right back to talk more about this, and I promise to work your calls in. This is the wrap-up show on Howard 100 and Howard 101. Welcome back to the wrap-up show. John, JD, Benji, Richard, Jason, Shuley, and Richard, you're sad because you've hurt your dear friend? I, d- I do. I really feel bad. I didn't think that he would be that upset about it. It's all right. Richard, I, I know uh, we're friends, and uh, I, I know you're... you're uh, you're a little backwards and maybe not realize uh, how that comes off sounding when you say you'd rather go see a band than go to your friend's wedding. Uh, but whatever. Don't worry about it. I mean, what, what do you want me to say? I mean, you made your decision. You know, I know. I, mean, I don't, so- you know, go. Wait, wait, here's, I don't here. expect you to say anything. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I he- didn't. To me, like, I don't. Gary's right. Gary said something today that I think is totally right. In this part of the country, weddings are really, really important to people. I don't think I ever went to a wedding until Bubba's wedding. I can't remember going to any, and I didn't even go to my sister's wedding because she just had a small one with my parents. And it, where I'm from, it's I haven't you gone to You didn't go to your b- sister's wedding? No. I, right, I don't feel bad anymore. I haven't gone <laughs> I mean, to my, best, my <laughs> best friend's wedding. Well, I didn't get invited. They just had a small <laughs> thing. Richard. Your sister didn't invite you? Richard. No, they wanted to have a real, well, real small based, wedding. Based on, how small could it be? Based on the relationships that you've made here and the friends that you've got from the show, if you were getting married, right, and Jason couldn't make it because he was going to see Aerosmith out in Los Angeles because Aerosmith was doing their Guitar Hero concert or something lame like that. They're doing all 23 albums. Would you... <laughs> that wouldn't bother you that Jason didn't come to your wedding? Honestly, it wouldn't bother me at all. If I knew how important that was to Jason, 
I mean, it's cheesy, but music is like one of the biggest things in my life. All right, where would you rank this Coheed and Cambria performance in events in your life? Uh, as far as concerts, probably at, right at the top. But I mean, compared to like, you're saying it's more important than a good friend's wedding. Is it more like? But would to you, me, wait, wait, hold on. Would you miss Howard and Beth's wedding for it? Uh, probably. Would you miss? Uh, would you miss a day of work on the show for it? N- uh, that no. I uh, wouldn't. Birth- I put the show before everything, but to me, it also matters how important that event is to that person. Like from what Jason's been well, for, saying. Well, hold on a second, dude, because I've only been saying this publicly today. So you didn't make this decision today. Well, yeah, but I just realized today when you said the date that it's going to conflict with when I want to go out there. Oh, hey, are you going? Yeah. You said they're playing in New York for a couple of days in LA. For, are you going to each one? Yeah. You're going to all of them? Yeah. And is this the one of the ones where if you have to pee during the performance, you'll pee in your pants? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Richard, listen, I, again, I get, how, I get how gay weddings are, but you're making a conscious decision to say, look, I want to go to this concert more than I want to go see my friend get married, something that's only going to happen hopefully once in his life. <laughs> uh, it, when you say it like that and you put it out you know, in plain facts, it, it, it sounds harsh, dude. To me, it I sounds know, harsh. I'm sorry, but to me, I, like, I'm not a marriage-type person. To me, a, mar- a marriage is a religious thing. I'm not religious. I would enjoy hanging out with you just as much the weekend before as I would at your wedding. I know, I know it wouldn't that. be as important to you, no. but why couldn't we go out this Saturday before your wedding and hang out? <laughs> well, Richard, I love hanging out with you, and we can hang out any weekend. I know. Uh, and Richard, I've invited you Richard, over to our Richard, place and everything. Richard, I, I love you as a friend. Richard, you know? he's not taking out a $15,000 <laughs> loan to pay for hanging out with you a different weekend. Like, I mean, that's the... I'm trying to convey the enormity of this in Jason's well, eyes and, like, but, in this this event. I know, but he's... The way he's been describing, he's taken out that loan because he wants to make the day special for other people. But... but uh, agreed. Like, that that day is more special to other people than it is to him. But the one thing that gets lost <laughs> in all the money and all the bullshit is the fact that I'm actually getting married. And I know some people might say as a gay, that it's a big deal. But the point of... Of, of getting married in front of people is to have the people you care about there. And listen, if you can't make it, you can't make it. I understand that. People have lives. People have to do shit. It's your excuse for not making it. It, it, it cuts a little. That's all. That's all. That's all. I mean, listen, what are you going to do? Hey, this is John Hine. And on Wednesday's wrap-up show, Gary spoke about Robin in the WNBC days. And they weren't exactly on the best of terms. And I think Gary thought that Robin wanted him out of there. So Gary tells a couple of stories and reveals that it was really tense between the two of them. And then one day Robin called and made it all go away. Robin had complained about how Howard never came to her when she was having weight issues. And Howard then said, well, here's the story of Robin and went to a bunch of stuff that happened at NBC. And even Robin admitted she wasn't exactly on a straight and narrow during that time period. And actually, Teddy, you got a clip. Hip number two, if you missed this, here's a little bit of Robin and Howard explaining what was going on then. Robin would make me mental. I'm tired. I'd go in, I got I'm, through. I'd go on the air. Oh. There were times she wouldn't talk to me. There were times she was angry. There were times I didn't even know. I read in her book she was stomping on my face. <laughs> on the air? She uh, wouldn't talk yeah, to you? Yeah, she would get, well, she would talk on the air, but I knew, you would know when Robin was upset about something. Fast and and everything upset Artie, her. there were times, you know how you go to sleep in here? Right. Mm. There were times I would, would go back on the air. I wouldn't even be there. I'd be walking around the block. Wow. Yeah. Wow. A block. Really? Yeah, I would go outside and take a, a walk wow. around Rockefeller yeah. Center to try to get my head together. Yeah, and I don't know what you were upset about, but you were upset. I was upset from my childhood. Oh, I see. But I didn't know what was going on. Gary, was it that bad? Yeah. I mean, I, some of the stuff I hadn't heard, but there were, there were times. It wasn't consistently horrible, but there were times when Robin would get in these, these, these moods, these funks, and it would affect all of us, and it would just sort of be stay out of Robin's way. Robin came in during the commercial break, and she said, you know, listen, I really was crazy. And she hugged me. She goes, you know, I owe you an apology, too, which she apologized to me, you know, years years ago. And we're, we're like, really good right now. But I told the story, and I'll tell it now. And, and this is one of the ones I remember really vividly. You got to say something. I was young, and I wasn't even sure that I belonged on the show. Like, I had no confidence. I always felt like I was here, you know, because Howard would always say I could fire you at any moment. And that really got into my head. So... When somebody like Robin, who's in a position of authority, makes you feel like you're bad at what you do or you're not up, you know, up to what you should be doing, it really affects you. So 
I, I don't know. She would get moody. It would get crazy. And you never just could understand what could trigger it or what you might have done. And it would be weird because I would go home and she would tell me something that I did that was horrific. And I would go home and I go, I think I didn't do anything wrong, but I don't, I'm sorry for what I did, but I don't know what I'm sorry for. So I walked in one morning and Fred was waiting for me at the front door of K-Rock. And he goes, dude, I'm just going to warn you. Robin's in her booth I hear with, with Howard. I hear a lot of yelling. And I've heard your name a lot. So I was like, oh, my God. Oh, So so I go. And then after the show, Howard brings Robin in. Robin's mad at me about something. And he's going to sit us down. So he sits Robin down, just the three of us. And he says, Robin, what's your beef? And she starts. I, I can't even remember exactly what it was. But Gary's this and Gary's that. And it was the first time I stood up for myself. I said, Howard, I got to tell you, she's out of her mind. This, none of this is true. And Robin and I started fighting. And Howard, exactly the way he said he dealt with things, he dealt with it. He got up and he goes, you know what, you two? I can't deal with this. I'm leaving. You two figure it out. If you can't get along, then just don't come in tomorrow. And he left. And then Robin and I sort of worked it out. But that was like really heavy for me. That was like a really heavy thing for me. Like even early on, we went to L.A. one time. This is another one that just got in my head. We went to L.A. when we were at NBC. And this is before FedEx. This is before email and the Internet and all that crap. Robin was a news person. Robin was like, I need the New York Post and the Daily News every day. Those are New York papers. I'm in Los Angeles. How am I going to get those? So I go down to that newsstand, the one that you've seen in every movie. It's on the corner of something. It's both corners, as far as you can see, are magazines and newspapers all the way up. And I get a copy of the New York Post and the Daily News from that morning later that day. The next morning, I, you know, and of course, I spent three hours finding this place and you know, asking everybody. The next morning, I meet Robin for breakfast, and I, we're at a nice restaurant at the hotel. And I said, Robin, here's the papers I got for you. And she looks at them, and she sees the date. And she goes, you know what these are good for? And she throws them on the floor <laughs> in front of everybody. And I just got up, picked them up, went back to my room, and I'm like, I'm a horrible person. I'm the worst producer ever. I'm going to be fired. What were they good for the day before? I mean, they, in other words, yeah, they were a day late. Okay. They were, and they were a day late. But again, in, in Los Angeles, I, I was like, you could find the fucking New York papers in Los Angeles. Now, did these instances occur once in a while, or was it sort of a regular thing? It was regularly once in a while. <laughs> But you know, like like you know, it was almost like Ro- like Robin wasn't like this all the time. And then Robin would be nice and fun and generous. And sometimes we'd go out to dinner. You just never knew when this other person was going to rear its head. It was you know, she was pretty good a lot of the time, even most of the time. Now, how did Howard and Fred and Jackie react to it when this stuff was going down? You know, again, we all sort of just you know, I don't even think we had a discussion amongst ourselves about it. It was just one of those things where. It happened, and we all just sort of stuck our heads down, waited for it to blow over, and just moved on. Because I don't remember having real conversations with Fred about it. We just sort of you sort of deal with it. It was almost like it, it, when I'm ta- as I'm talking about it now, it's almost like having an alcoholic parent, and the kids just don't talk about it. Mm. So you were you were scared of being fired till you were established. Did she ever actually get anyone fired? <clears throat> you know, I don't know. I don't know. I remember one time Howard said in the air, and this is how Howard gets in your head. He goes. They were talking about how I was, you know, I'm not such a bad producer. And he goes, yeah, Robin, you wanted me to get rid of him. But I said no. And that could have been a joke. But in my head, Robin wanted to get rid of me. You know what I mean? So I'll never know. Now, how does the Robin of today compare to that Robin? Oh, my God. They're, they're just a completely different planes. Robin, for years, for many, many years now, has been completely level-headed. I've never seen – I haven't seen one of those outbursts in ages. You know, you can talk to her about stuff. You know, the, the way it ended for Robin and I – and uh, I think I told this on the show once, and it was really one of the weirdest things for me. Robin had gone to some, you know, one of those sort of, uh, I think what she talked about it's called the forum, but it was one of those, you know, sort of mental health seminars. And whatever happened there was a big breakthrough for her. So it was one of those days when the show was dark, but I was working. I got a Monday morning around 920, and one of the interns says, Robin's on the phone, which is odd, because why would Robin call me during vacation? And I pick it up, and it's Robin, and she said, listen, I just want to tell you, Um, that uh, I think that you're an amazing producer. I think that you do a wonderful job. And I maybe always haven't told you that in the past, but I really think the world of you. And I just want to tell you that I love you. And there was this long pause and I was like, 
uh, okay. Because I just I didn't know how to react to that. It was a lot of information at once. And then Robin started laughing really hard because she even sort of recognized the absurdity of it, that it was this big thing. And she said, hey, I went to this thing and I realized there's a lot of issues. And, you know, a lot of the issues I've had are mine, not yours, but I've made you feel bad. And I, you know, and that was a big moment. That was for me from that day forward. I've never seen that other Robin. Now, what do you guys think of Robin's policy, I guess, for lack of a better term, of waiting 24 hours before reacting to anything? I think that takes a, I mean, that takes an amazing amount of uh, self-control. Can you know, you, I don't know that I could do that. Can you guys do that, Sal? I Richard? couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, you got to have a strong willpower to be able to do something like that. I mean, that's kind of like writing the email but not sending it, you know, like really trying to hold back. But I don't know if anybody could do that. Benji, are you able to do that? Yeah, I think I am. But I don't think normally I, – I wonder what she really does that about now. Like what? Like what kind of issues is she saying that she waits twenty four hours to react? But see, to? I think that the old Robin had all these issues that she had to do that for, and I think that the sort of cured Robin, well, for want of a better word, I don't think the issues come up as much, so it might right. not be as difficult to do. Well, what I found it wild is, and maybe she, I guess she's being honest when she said, as soon as the therapist told her that, she was like, it was like a revelation, mm-hmm. and that she was able to 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 start doing that immediately now richard were you aware of robin's exhibitionist nature that she was talking about this morning absolutely well when i first started working here i got a hold of a a copy of robin's audio book so i listened to it and robin narrates it and it's great it's a great audio book i was pulling clips you know for bits and prank calls and stuff but i learned a lot about robin by listening to her audio book and that was one of the parts that fascinated me she she said she would have these urges to just rip open her shirt and flash <laughs> cab drivers that were sitting at the corner at a light and she just had these urges to do you know stuff like that back when she was going through a lot of these problems you know it's funny because i, I read the book and i heard all that and these are things i didn't know and jackie used to get all irritated by it he used to go, he thought jackie thought that robin made stuff up for the book and you know what he used to call her book what? quivers a lie <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's Al, and on Thursday's wrap-up show, I unfortunately got busted fucking around with the cupcakes, but I wasn't the only one who was guilty. It was Lisa G., Gary, and possibly other people. Things got a little crazy, so check it out. This is what happened. There's the Oreo cupcake, which is a delicious cupcake. Right. And on the top, there's like a flimsy piece of Oreo that sits on top. That's your definition, flimsy. It was a little flimsy piece, and it was like bent slightly over. You know, chocolate uh, chip was it, was an Oreo. Oh, okay, whatever it was. No, the chocolate chip cookie went on top of the caramel yeah, apple icing. There was no Oreo cookies this week. I'm trying to explain this. Will you stop for a second? Well, he can't remember what week he did what. Because he can't look at you when he talks to you. He's a fucking liar. What's with the looking? You're because you're a liar. Look at you. You people, probably have glaucoma. You're like 90 years old. How do you even know where I'm looking? People who you got can't fucking tell the glasses truth, that look like two fish tanks you over your fucking face, midget okay? eyeballs. Asshole. Let me talk. You got fish tanks over your face. Yeah. You should Don't be the worry last guy. Fish tanks. You should be the last guy uh, talking about people and how they look. You can't even see. I can fucking see. All right, I let me finish. You. you can't even reach I the counter where the cupcakes are. You got to hop up to see what's on that fucking table. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm trying to explain. I'm admitting my guilt please yeah, Ronnie please All right. you may be a nice admitting, guy you, but you, shut up you may be admitting guilt but you lack remorse uh, you know what You're do you want me guilty. to do what, I'm sorry what do you want me to start crying over a goddamn no, just, say, just tell the truth I'm, sorry, I'm telling the truth go how, ahead how much more? you're very defensive right, so, tell I'm the not truth. defensive I'm embarrassed All right, embar- I don't like to- All right, so tell the two, truth go there's ahead. two extra cupcakes with the Oreos on top or if Ronnie wants let's hypothetically chocolate chip cupcakes it doesn't matter those flimsy cookies were sitting on top. I pulled one off. That's true. Now I remember because Jared made it perfectly clear. You remember because Jared saw the tape and fucking cornered well, I don't you. Have okay. The, I don't have the ability to remember all this stuff. I'm busy during the course of the day. My head's always thinking of things. So, yeah, right. But Jared, remi- <laughs> Jared reminded me. I pulled that cookie off. Then I grabbed a chocolate chip cookie, an independent cookie, not touching anything, picked it up, and I scraped a little bit of the caramel icing off of the uh, apple Caramel. So that's cupcake. two cupcakes you've now touched. Well, you, and Not you, touched. I touched. Right. I touched a cookie or one. Whatever. There's, Never two, made there's, contact. Two, there's two cupcakes that you've now but, taken. See, that's a- where I'm saying that could be another p- double dipping because your hand touches the cookie and the part nah, that your hand touches you, the cookie you, could you, also you, go back into the cupcake, the cupcake and fucking take it to your office. And because eat it. I didn't want. And let me tell you something. When I I'm go sick there, of these people with that shit, I'm going to call crumbs and tell them to stop sending this shit. Well, do whatever you want to do, but you know what? I'm not the only one who does it. And it was it was a flimsy cookie on top of the cupcake. Big deal. I mean. I have a woman that stands next to me and tells me, 
oh, this is so good. Oh, right. Don't where? you love these Snickers? Who's well, that woman? Lisa G. Uh, right, and where is she? Will, where is Lisa G? She's, she's out hiding. double dipping right now. She's guilty. She's hiding. We'll she's deal with guys, 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 guys. Settle down. Set, guys, settle down. We'll oh. deal with Lisa G in a moment. Jared, she's in big trouble. Hold on, Sal. <laughs> Jared. And the reason that Steve Langford, you know, used the word double dip is because I said that what I saw was my definition double dipping, which is in one instance, Sal reaches down for a cupcake, he pulls off the topping, makes you know, swipes away at the frosting, eats it. Then you know he puts it in his mouth with the same hand, reaches back and does it to a separate cupcake, takes the, sa- you know, the topping off, scoops again on a separate cupcake, and puts it in his mouth. So in my mind, that's double dipping because his hand's going into his mouth to feed himself, and he's going back and reaching on and touching another cupcake. And then he stuck his hand in his ass after that. No. Forget the hand in your ass all. for a that's second. That's not even close. Picks his ass. It's not double you dipping. Is, is what Jared, Jared said I, true or false? I commend, yeah, it's true, and I commend Jared. Very good what job. What about picking your ass? You do that all the time I don't in the pick, hallway. What are you watching my, where my yeah, hands go? I don't pick my, my ass. I'm in the fucking hallway to watch more. I don't pick like my you. ass. Yeah, Ronnie, you got your fucking hand in your ass all the all time. All right, next time you I have my hand in my ass, you tell me. My hands, I guarantee you right now, if we swab my hands and your hands, there'll be more germs on your fingers than mine. I guarantee they won't be. Are you kidding me? I've seen the fucking tramps that you cavalcade with. Are you kidding yeah, right. yeah. Get lost. <laughs> yeah, okay. Your hands, Don't go there, your, pal. your hands are like a petri dish in a yeah. fucking uh, in an AIDS clinic. Yeah, get right. lost. Let's get that. Let's get to lunch at Rick's. Shut up. What's you... wrong with that? I love lunch at Rick's. Yeah. Quiet down, you ridiculous cavalcator. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sal, the other difference here, I think, is Lisa and Gary weren't looking down the halls and making sure no one was there because before. they're not on tape. Looking down, we're the all hall. on tape, idiot. And I'm looking down the hall because... <laughs> why? I don't even want to say why. Why? Because there's speakers everywhere and I'm trying to listen to the show. <laughs> yeah, so right, like, yeah, right. <laughs> so full of shit. So full of oh, shit. You so never full. know, you know. So full of oh, shit. Sal, yeah. you're, the, oh, you're the best. I'm busted. I mean, what can I tell you? I, it was a cookie on top of a cupcake. I want to meet one fucking person that has never done something like that. Even in, uh, on Wall Street, you always had, yet people went into, I can't understand this, assholes go into refrigerators, take other people's food. I can't get that. How many times did you get written up for that when you were on Wall Street? Never. I would never touch that. The, the thought of somebody putting a sandwich in a refrigerator and a complete stranger He's going in the there like again. a homeless person. Look, looking like He's a homeless person. Will you shut the fuck He's up? looking at the floor. Somebody back. muzzled this fucking dwarf. <laughs> Gary, God, you're like a chihuahua gnawing at my He's Asshole, lying. just Give get out, out of here. Test. But touching all the cupcakes is okay? No, it's not okay. I'm guilty. Okay, you're guilty. Hey, God, you, you get a new Sal. Do, with the sandwiches also. do you guys think it's worse that Sal Same did it or Lisa sandwiches. did it? What's that? Do you think it's worse that Sal did it or Lisa did it? Or well, I don't same? know. What did Lisa do? Lisa stood right next to me and picked the Snickers off the fucking cupcake, <laughs> the Snickers, and said, oh, gee, this is so good. And I felt like saying, her, why don't you take the fucking cupcake to your office? Eat the Snickers. Oh, throw here, it in the I garbage. I think she's coming down. If you want. Well, we also don't know where Lisa's hands are. You know what I'm saying? Plus, right. I throw mean, it in the garbage. If you don't want to eat it, you're not paying for it. And I clip my fingernails. Chicks don't clip their fingernails. And that's where a lot of germs build up. So when you're digging in, that fingernail acts like a shovel. And you can imagine all the bacteria going into that frosting from that fingernail. Certainly surpasses a guy taking the tip of a cookie and scraping the top of frosting. She's fucking guilty. And if anybody gets sick here, let it be on her head. <laughs> You're pulling out all the stops, aren't you? Well, if I'm guilty, they're fucking coming down. That fucking ship's going. We're all sinking together. All right, Lisa. Lisa, Lisa get up to the mic before I smack you. Lisa just walked in. Yes, Sal right. was saying that you, you know, that wants to get only your. You're all a bunch of I'm only sissies. Kidding, Hold on, she wants to get your Thank response, you. but he, he also just made. First the... of all, stop eating. The, if you ate the toppings instead of the whole cupcake, you'd all be thinner. Not you, Gary, but everyone else. Well, I'd be thinner. They're all pathetic. I am pathetic. I Keep going, three girl. Interesting tactic. Lisa G coming out swinging on the wrap-up show. Lisa, what happened? What, what, did you, what did you do? What have I done in the past? I've gone like this. I picked off a, sn- a piece of a snicker that's sticking way up in the oh, air so that my finger now. doesn't have to touch the cupcake. Oh, please. But Lisa, so what you, you did... Is, I'm sorry, Benji. So what you did is different than what Sal did, correct? Of course. Well, let Lisa answer. I don't know. I mean, I he are you saying you didn't double dip? I didn't double dip, but I di- I didn't make finger contact like you did. Your <laughs> right. fingers touched the frosting. No, it did not. And but Lisa, your fingers to touched something. That can I tell you, you broke- something? Do you know how many germs are at a bank teller machine? Do you know how many people don't wash their hands here at the bathroom? You guys are pathetic. 
pathetic. You're focusing in on something that's so little and stupid. But Lisa, why didn't you just take the whole cupcake back to your and, desk? And then I started to. And then I felt badly like, wow, someone really wants a cupcake and I'm taking the whole oh, thing. Oh, yeah, I'm like just they're gonna really going to eat it after you pick the yes, stuff Yes, they will. No, every they won't. cupcake no, is No, they eaten. won't. No, they're not. Ronnie, every cupcake on a Wednesday, there's never no, anything left. That's because they throw them in the garbage. They Lisa, do not. They eat you're them. You're like blaming the rape victim. You're, yeah. say, you're, you're, you're saying that we should, we should not be disgusted by this? What she does is right and what we do is wrong. What? Now I know you're getting me all confused. Because I don't you say, you're saying that because you take it, you pick it off the top and don't touch it. You're saying supposedly. that supposedly that's we okay. shouldn't be bothered by it. You shouldn't be. Bo- I don't. I don't know why you're focusing on it, Benji. Everyone's eating so many Sal cupcakes. Got it's nailed. disgusting. That's that, disgusting. But that's, that's you're, not the wait, issue. Where's your you're, apology, Lisa? You're, like mine. Where's you're, your Lisa, apology, you Lisa? Lisa. Oh, are you are, How dare I'm, you? All right. I'm sorry, Lisa. Do you, but you don't have any remorse. No, I don't. You'll do it again. No, I'm not. But Lisa, Howard said you were disgusting. How I know. Feel, how do you feel and about that? I agree with him. That was disgusting. That must That's be the painful. way people feel. No, it's not. All right, but Lisa, the guy you're in love looking with. Looking at your the guy bellies you're in love is painful. With said you're disgusting. Picking uh, off a little piece of a Snickle bar is not painful. Lisa, your bellies are painful. Lisa, don't deflect. Don't yeah, deflect. I'm not deflecting. Yes, you are. Painful when they're on That's top exa- of you. Say, look, and saying. <laughs> that too. And saying we're all fat isn't exactly going out <laughs> not, on a limb. Not there. all of you, but you know who you are. See, now there's silence. Look at this. Well, that's me what you do. Th- you create silence. Get <laughs> out. <laughs> Methinks thou doth protest too much, Lisa. No, I mean, I, I, I can I, understand I, I. what uh, Sal did. I would love to see the tape. Oh, I'm sure I look the same way when I've done it, but at least I've been <laughs> open about it. But not that it makes it any uh, better that I did that. So I do apologize. It won't happen again. It was disgusting. <laughs> all right, so how many times do you have to say that? Ronnie, what are you going to do about this? I, I'm, I'm, First of all... I'm going to have to the, put an armed guard on the fucking cupcakes. <laughs> I don't think we should have cupcakes. Why? Yeah, what, what is it, Look how, do, how many people should are obese who work on this show. Oh, please. Please. Like yeah, Lisa, why don't you, you go downstairs shut down McDonald's and Burger King while you're at it? <laughs> I know, I understand. Jeez. You know, I mean, that, let's not get crazy. If somebody doesn't... If somebody, does have the self control, like a producer of a show, to walk by and not eat two cupcakes? <laughs> I don't. Think, so I don't think there would be a problem anymore. Now that everybody knows they're being watched, so right, that is it's going to be a whole different scene there. Well, Lisa, Gary, and Sal, I'm glad you all came clean. I'm glad you admitted yeah. to your mistakes. Jared, I, didn't, I didn't come clean. Jared, the douchebag next to me threw me under the bus. That's true, <laughs> but Jared, I am sorry, Jared. Nice job on uh, Operation Cupcake, and now I think we can. <laughs> I think we can move on. Yeah.